What up, y'all? This is Gene Noble, and you know I got soul. <laughs> All right, you know, I got so very excited to be with Gene Noble, uh, currently on the Usher tour. But, you know, we've been supporting Gene for years. He's been supporting us. So, Gene, it's an honor to speak to you. Likewise, likewise. I'm glad to be here. For sure. I want to get started first off with this Usher tour. Obviously, this is not your first Usher tour. You're on the UR experience years ago, but now you're back at it. I mean, just talk about this tour and what makes this one so epic for you. Yeah, um, it's it's cool because uh, Usher, that's Kim. <laughs> <laughs> um, it's cool because Usher's had such an epic year, so it's cool to be a part of watching um you know this year that was so great for him and to kind of be a part of uh this whole moment uh in his career like you know it's it's good when good people win and he's a good person and right. so it's good to see him win no for sure i mean everyone that knows you knows that you're a vocal beast and i asked um <laughs> ali the same question right is there's a big difference between being front and center on stage versus being a background singer uh, it's a different animal obviously like how have you been able to develop that skill set? Um, I started out singing in church. Yeah. So it's a lot of singing with groups, singing right. in harmonies, that kind of a thing. So I think I really started out there. So right. then stepping okay. out, singing lead, um, you know, became a thing. Yeah. But so the the harmonizing and the singing with other people and blending and that stuff, that was what I first did. That was what I did first, you know. So um, that part wasn't uh, that part wasn't ever hard. Um, and also, I kind of like I really liked um, kind of being a part of the team that was making the show. Right. Know? That was cool. I always liked that thought. No, that's awesome. Um, and then to you now, obviously, you dropped an album. And this was your first album in, I think, nine years, Feel Away. Yeah. I, I had a chance to listen to it. And, like, one thing that kind of surprised me but I also really enjoyed was just the fact that there were all these different sonics, all these different sounds. It yeah. wasn't your traditional um, R&B record. I think you drew from a lot of different ins inspirations. Like I think the groove sounded like something that um, I was familiar with. Yeah. But then you have some of the other records like Supposed to Be. That was a little different for me, but I love that record too. Yeah. Like, just talk about your mindset going into that album and obviously with the way r&b is now it allows you to have that creativity yeah i mean i think i think you know people are consuming things as individual songs yeah um and even though there was a consistency of like the writing and yes. the style of songs and the the emotion behind it like definitely takes you on a consistent journey um i definitely wanted to do something that was kind of like sonically different and um yeah, I'm working on a new one now that'll wow. come out at uh, the top of this year, and I'm really excited about that one. Um, and it's, it's the same thing all over the place. We're just giving you different vibes, different energies, and I think that comes from me writing for different artists and singing in so many different styles with different artists. I don't really stay in one place. Right. You know? No, that's a great point. But you know what I will also say is just the fact that you were producing on a lot of those records too that you did yes. on that album and that kind of surprised me but now that I've gotten to know you a little bit a little bit better I'm not surprised because I think you really pride yourself on being a one man band you want to be able to yeah feel everything and, and be a part of everything like how important was it for you to develop your production skills too to work on for this album um well you know I always am somehow involved in it anyway like yeah. I definitely arrange things I'll take instruments out I'll add yeah. you know verb or delay to somebody's stuff you know so I've always kind of been a part of that but as I'm developing more you know i I want to put my ideas in, in it, like especially when it comes to like keys and bridges and yeah. like stuff like that. I just want to make it my own. So even if I get a song or a beat that I love, like I'll just kind of like find my way to make it mine. You know? Right. Where did that mentality come from? Because for a lot of artists, they're cool with just being an artist. They want to sing on the records, release the records. But I think you want to be more hands on with it. Like, where did that come from? Uh it's just about, you know, having an idea in your your head of what you want to hear, yeah. you know, and just making sure that that's translated. And sometimes the best way to do that is to do it yourself. Right. No, great point. So. 
Now, I just mentioned earlier, a lot of people obviously know you as a vocal beast. And I think that's no secret. Um, as an independent artist, like you have been, like, has it been tough to kind of, because everyone tells you that, 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 that you're one thing, but then you're looking around and you might not be at the level that maybe some, that, that might not be at that same caliber as yeah. you. Like, how do you keep yourself grounded from that standpoint and just continue to stay on path and stay focused? Yeah, I mean, you know, indie, being an indie artist is definitely a grind. And yeah. I think, um, you know, what you, the the thing you have on on your side, you know, the thing that you kind of like maybe lose out from maybe a, a big label or something like that, but you gain on the other side is the freedom to do exactly what you want to do. Right. Um, and I love that. And I think, you know, I've been really fortunate as an independent artist because I've been able to like, fund my music and do my thing while touring with like Jay-Z or Usher exactly. or Chris Brown or Sting or CeeLo or, you know, so it's been like, you know, that's a great way to take a break. You know what I mean? If we call that a slowing down of the process, right. that's yeah. a ha I'll happily take that. <laughs> you know what I mean? For sure. And I think it's really important. Like I just seen on your Instagram, even though you're on the road right now, you're continually finding inspirations, yeah, finding sure. ideas for records. Um, while you're on the road, is that, I think for a regular person, that would be hard to do because there's just so much around you and yeah. so much that can get you distracted. Like, But you really want to focus in on your artistry still, which is pretty cool because you could just be a background singer and get paid very well doing that. But I think the mindset for you is still that you want to be putting out your own music. Oh, yeah, for yeah. sure. I'm always going to put out my own music, you know. Uh, and hopefully people keep listening to it. Right. Uh, but yeah, no, I would always be putting out my own music, and I love that. Uh, I like I said, I get to see the world. You know, lucky for me, sometimes now I'm places that I've been ten times, so right. I don't need to go out and sightsee. So I can set up my studio in my room and record. Um, I have collaborators all over the world now at this point, which right. is also really cool. And um, I try to sing live. I try to find places in different cities to go and touch a mic and just meet people and, and, and connect. Um, so what's happened for me is I've been able to use touring to build a fan base like all over the world, which right. is cool. No, yeah. for sure. I've always wondered because I know your voice is very rooted in R&B, obviously the D'Angelo influences there. But I've always wondered like – You've had records with Shaggy um, yeah. and all these international artists as well, and you've made records outside of the realm of R and B. Like, yeah. was that something that came naturally to you, or did you have to just kind of adapt with the times? Because, like, when that record came out, that was when R and B was in a weird space. Like, just talking yeah. about that. Yeah, um, I I've been really really fortunate to to have a very versatile voice. Yeah. You know, um, I you know I've sung background for sting you know right. i've sung soprano with like joe scott you mm -hmm. know yeah. uh i've been able to you know do what i do with usher but i think it's all because i um am a very versatile singer which comes from just you know growing up in church music in school um singing in different styles so um that's afforded me the ability to be able to just like switch it up um, and I think that that has helped me a lot, especially being like a bass baritone naturally. Yeah. Um, even though a lot of people think I'm not, but right. I actually am a <laughs> right. bass baritone naturally. But as a singer, as a working singer, you need to be able to sing a whole lot more than that, you know? So, um, it caused me to really just stretch and figure it out. And, um, and I love being able to do whatever I hear. So for me, that's a big thing is being able to sing all over the place. <laughs> right. No, for yeah. sure. No, that's awesome. Now let's circle back to you know the music that you have coming up because obviously um, we know that R&B has gone through a huge evolution over the last 10 years or so, even more than that now. Kind of talk about where you kind of find your, your space in R&B now um, and, and what you kind of see R&B and where it's going right now. Sure. Uh, I mean, I think what's really cool about now is that your people find you, your tribe finds you, people who like what you do can can you know search you out and find you. Um, so I'm just going to continue doing that. I'm going to continue making the stuff that I like, the stuff that makes me feel something. Yeah. And I always hope that it makes somebody else feel something. And that's just the way we do it. Nice. That's that's amazing. Um, so, Gene, I got to talk about you as an independent artist a little more because I know sure. it's it's a journey, right? Like you, you touched on it a little bit. Um, yeah. I mean, you've been fortunate, of course, to be on the road as well with all these greats. Like, 
what are some of the kind of the lessons that you learn uh, being on the road with these greats, like an usher that keeps you motivated to continue pushing? Because it's one thing to release music, but it's another to actually reach people. And, you know, that itself, a lot of people throw in the towel yeah. because of that. But you've continued to push. You're continually doing press. You're continually trying to, you know, touch the people. Like, what kind of gems have you gotten from these people? I mean, I think, uh, you know, I have gotten a lot of actual gems, yeah. which a lot of those are things I, I save as my little personal notes. Right. But one thing I will say is that you learn actually more by watching you know, mm. than you do by actually having conversations, by sitting back and watching. And uh, the thing that I could give to people that I think has helped me the most is understanding that no matter how big you are, you're still hoping that the room fills up. Right. No matter how big you are, you want the next big song. No matter how big you are, it's still the same grind. It's just you have more resources and more people supporting you. Right. So it's the exact same work of creating some music you know, uh, getting the best music you can. And it's the same process getting it out to the world. It's the same process getting butts in the seats to see you at a, at a concert. Right. You know, um, so once you, like, submit to the fact that no matter what level you're at, you're still going to be doing that. Um, that actually helped me a lot for some reason, you know. Wow, amazing. So lastly, Gene, I got to ask. You posted it on your Instagram, but I'd love to hear this the whole story. Obviously, Quincy Jones passed away. Yeah. Uh, rest in peace yeah. to him. And you had yeah. a chance. Um, to be around him, you sang for him. Like, just talk yeah. about that whole experience because Quincy Jones obviously is is Quincy Jones. But yeah, man. just talk about that. Yeah, R.I.P. Quincy Jones. What a incredible life! What an incredible career! Um, I yeah, I was fortunate enough to meet him a few times, and uh, one of those times, actually, the the first of those times was performing, um, there was a celebration of his years in music, mm. and it was at his house, and actually there was a bigger named artist uh, that was meant to perform, wow. but couldn't you know, get there or whatever, and they needed someone who played keys and sang right. uh, to do a few of Quincy's songs. And someone asked me if I could do it. And they were like, well, you have to get there yourself. And I was right. like, that I'll get there myself. You yeah. Know? <laughs> so, uh, yeah. So then uh, fast forward, I'm in his house, you know, practicing these songs that I'm going to sing for the event later on. And in he walks and um, I get to meet him and he gives me all these amazing gems. I, you know, we talk for a really long time. He walked me through uh, his house and wow. showed me the, the different plaques, uh, you know. The Thriller plaque, wow. uh, which he was uh, quick to tell me was inaccurate. There were a few <laughs> more millions that right. it had sold, Correct. so he needed a new plaque to come in. Right. Um, and then, but also like Sarah Vaughn and, and you know, Ella Fitzgerald. Wow. And, you know, yes. I mean, Duke Ellington, like, like, like going back that far, yeah. but also, you know, still doing Kanye West, still yeah. doing T-Pain, still doing, you know, KC and JoJo. Like, so... Um, it was just a really inspiring moment for me. Um, I I take that moment with me forever. And, and, and also, you know, I also performed at Maya Angelou's birthday party before mm, she passed. Right. And I saw him again. And, you know, I had this whole thing planned in my head of how I was going to remind him of the, the time that I met him at his house. Right. And he, like, comes up to me and he's like, hey, you know, what have you been up to? Wow. Blah, blah, like, starts <laughs> talking about, you know, the last time we saw each other and... And I just did not expect, you know, somebody who meets that many people and, you know, whatever, to even just remember that. And then um, then I performed at Montreux Jazz uh, Fest with uh, The Roots and Usher. Mm. And I saw um, Quincy again. Wow. And we had a cool conversation again. And um, But, yeah, just a big inspiration. Obviously, larger-than-life figure um, and massively, massively important in music. Um, one of one, and I think you know just the life that he's lived and the, the his contribution is in, incredible. Um, so I am very grateful that I had the opportunity to meet him, to let him, to sing for him, to play the keys for him, like right. crazy, and just to get those those moments. I'll never forget him. You know, wow, that's amazing, and it's pretty cool just to see not only the fact that you were around these people, but they remember you. They, yeah. they remember your gift and your talent. So that speaks a lot yeah, about sure. you as well. Um, Gene, that's that's all we have for you. Is there anything you'd like to add? Yeah, um, you know what, y'all, check me out, follow me on all, all the things. You know, at I am Gene Noble, and uh, the new music is coming out top of next year. 
Uh, be on the lookout for that. New visuals. I'm mixing and mastering everything now. We're going to get some cool stuff going. And a- absolutely, after I'm done with this Usher tour, I will be touring solo. So awesome. So look out for that. Sounds good.